Welcome to the channel. In this video, I wanted to do a quick review of the Sunlu Terminator 3 or T3 FDM printer. It's a bed slinger, you know, Ender 3 clone, um, just like all the others out there, but they do quote a 250 millimeter per second printing speed with this thing. Uh, so I thought, you know, I had the opportunity to pick one up, so let's do it. And it, it, it's actually a nice little printer. And, you know, the 250 millimeter per second was the selling point for me. Um, but I must say, I really do like the aesthetic of it. I like the way that they've got it put together. Um, they've done a couple of little different things on it that are kind of interesting that I'll touch on in the review. But, you know, for all intents and purposes, it's a standard printer that you're going to buy today. You know, it has auto bed leveling. It's got a run out sensor. Um, it has clog detection which I didn't test, but uh, that's kind of interesting, I guess. Anyhow, let's get to the actual review. This is the main board for the T3. As you can see, it does have an empty slot for your second Z driver. Make it real easy to upgrade to a dual Z setup on this printer. You can see the drivers are built into the board. It does have ferrules, which is nice board itself appears to be new custom. Now it has a uh, Giga Devices GDM F32303, which is a clone of the 103, just like the Creality's. There's your blower. It's not really positioned very well, but I guess that works. I haven't had any problems with it. All in all, a tidy little setup. Don't really like the drivers built into the board though. Here's a look at the screen and the firmware that's on the T3. It's standard Marlin, but they've done some custom changes to it. You know, I really like when they give you a screen like this because it makes it moving the clipper really easy. Here's the extra addition, which is this fast print that you can turn on and off. The manual doesn't really talk about it a lot. It just says that you can turn it on and off uh, and that it's suitable for non-detailed work. But anyway, here's the version that I'm running. The bed for the T3 has like a build tech surface on it. It's magnetic. It pulls off really easy. I'm not sure how long it'll last. Um, but it seems pretty nice. Um, things stick to it really well. Haven't had any issues with adhesion or anything. And the magnet isn't super strong, so that's something else to think about. So I just wanted to take a second to touch on the base of this T3. I think Sunlu's done a really good job of, you know, the way that they've styled it. The design of it is, is at least in my opinion, nice. Really, the only bad thing I can think is that the bed gets in the way of the screen. But other than that, I love it. The T3 has a Y tensioner. To make it really easy to tune that belt. And it also has one on the X axis. I think most of the newer printers that you see now are going to come with these stock. But it's still a nice touch. Not to have to loosen up bolts and things like that to get the belts right. So I'm not sure why they did this, but there are two knobs on your bed screws. Um, I guess one of them acts as a lock due to the speed of it. I don't know, but the screw is too long for you to compress your springs the way you should when you set your bed tension because it'll hit the base, which isn't a good thing. Um, Again, I don't know why they did this. Um, it's a weirdly weird design. So continuing with our weird designs, there's your eccentric nut on the left side of the gantry, the X gantry. It's in its normal place. On the right side, you should have one right here, but you don't. You've actually got two on the back which is kind of nice because it allows you to set the tension for this side properly. 
Um, I've never seen this before, um, but again, it's it's a nice touch. You know, it's they've just they've made some little tweaks to this design, and this is one of them. Now, on the top of your lead screw, they actually have a little plastic knob, I guess you would call it. Um, it's kind of nice that it isn't big and bulky, and it does allow you to rotate the lead screw. Another nice change is that the fan to the power supply here is thermal, so it only comes on as needed, which is really nice that you don't have to listen to that fan all the time. Another nice thing that they've added here is this extruder. It's all metal, dual geared. It has a stiffer spring in it, as you can see, a yellow spring. But something else they've done is that the clips that you see, you know, they're normally made of plastic. These are made of metal, um, which I thought was a really nice touch. Uh, I've, I've never actually seen these clips used before, but they've got two right here. Um, so that's not going anywhere. Um, really nice touch. So this is kind of odd, but they actually have a fan that sits and blows against the extruder motor. Uh, again, I think this is due to the speed of the machine, but that's a really nice touch for you. Now this is the runout sensor, and it's kind of weird because it has this roller set up. I've never seen rollers on a runout sensor before, but, uh, but it's pretty nice. The weird thing though is you have to press this button in order to load your filament and I'm guessing it's holding on to it pretty good because this thing also acts as a clog sensor. Now this is just a closer look at the hot end. You can see the BL touch that we have here. It's a standard V6 style hot end. Of nothing really special about it. Um, you know, just like you'd find on pretty much any Creality. There's your exhaust fan and there is your parts cooling fan, just like any Ender clone you would see. You have, you know, your fan on one side. And this is just a better look at that hot end once the shroud is removed. Like I said, it's a standard, you know, what you'd find on any Creality machine. So I want you to see how fast this thing goes through its probing for the auto leveling. It does a four by four matrix, which is 16 points. And you're watching this in, in real time, or not real time, real speed. This is set up to do this in the firmware. You, as far as I've seen, you can't change it without turning auto leveling off, which you don't really want to do. And it's going to do this automatically every time you print something. Again, it's, it's coded in the firmware to do this. In my opinion, this is completely unnecessary. I mean, I know there are lots of people who want, you know, oh, every time I print, I want to make sure my bed is perfectly level and all of that. And sure, that's fine, but this is a 20 or 220 by 220 bed. It's small. It isn't going to be that far out print to print you're probably not going to be that far out you know, in a month, you know, printing all the time. It's, it's way overkill, in my opinion. Now, you can rebuild the firmware and you can do all that stuff, you know, because it's a standard machine. But I just want you to be aware that it's going to take this amount of time, you know, a, a minute and a half every time you print. So just keep that in mind. Now this is the first print from the SD card. It's a little spatula. And they had this labeled at taking 15 minutes to print. It actually took 40 minutes to print, which is kind of interesting, especially for a printer that's labeled as a high-speed printer. So let's see how our spatula turned out. I mean, as you can see, it, it looks pretty good. Um, I have zero problems with it. There's a little little turn in the corner. 
where it got really narrow. But that's fine. I mean, you want it to scrape stuff. And it looks pretty good. Zero problems with this print other than the amount of time it took. This is the second print on the card. Um, it's a cup. It's supposed to take three hours. It actually took seven hours. So either their numbers are off or I'm printing something wrong. Maybe I need to enable that fast print option. Okay, let's see how our cup turned out. Now this thing took forever to print. But it looks pretty good. Um, I guess really the only complaint that I have about it is that seam, if you can see that right there. Um, and that's probably the filament that I chose. This printer hasn't been tuned at all. This is the G code that, you know, came on the SD card. So you can kind of expect some of that stuff, especially when not using their filament. But it looks, you know, it looks like a cup and there's not a whole lot else to say. Um, again, that seam is really the only problem that I can see on it. I mean, your layer lines look really good. The outside seam isn't really that bad. Okay, so now we're in the slicer because the third print said it was going to take five hours and with my last, you know, it might have taken three days. So let's actually slice something. Now I'm using just a standard Ender 3 profile inside of Cura. Um, this is all standard defaults. Um, I've got a Voron cube loaded here. We're going to print it on you know, draft mode 0.28 because we're kind of looking for speed. Uh, I really want to see how fast this thing can print. So we will slice this guy up. Let's go ahead and shrink it down a little bit because these come 30 by 30. Um, I want to print it 20 by 20. So let me change these real quick. All right, now this is going to take, or at least according to this, 30 minutes. And I want to test that fast print button. So this by default, our speed is at 50 millimeters per second. And that's again going to take us roughly 30 minutes to print. And then we'll use that as our base and then we'll turn fast printing on and we'll see what difference that makes, you know, printing the exact same G code. Okay. So it's printing out that boron cube now. And we're going to use this as our baseline for the other tests that we do just to see how, you know, this fast print works and what we can actually do or potentially do with this machine. Okay. And as expected, this took 30 minutes and it actually looks really good. I have zero problems with this print. See the lines look really well. No ghosting. There's our bottom. Looks really good. And again, I mean, this, this isn't tuned at all. So, you know, you can definitely refine what you're looking at here. And I would say it did a fantastic job on this. So now we have fast printing turned on and we're going to print that exact same G code that we did before that took 30 minutes. Okay. So let's see what we got here. 
Oh, that isn't too good. I mean, you have to keep in mind this is an untuned printer. And I mean, it doesn't look too bad, but it doesn't look too great. Uh, you can see there's some under extrusion. First level's way too fast. Lots of under extrusion. You know, but it's a starting point, I think. You know, and, and they tell you that turning on that fast print option is not meant for any details. But it shows this potential. Because the thing to keep in mind is that from the regular standard cube that took 30 minutes, this one took 18. So that's a big jump. Okay, so this is the same Voron cube, but I've re-sliced it using one of my speed profiles because I'm really interested to see how this thing is going to do um, using an actual tuned profile. So let's find out. Okay, so let's see how this one did. Uh, like I said, this is my fast profile, and this thing looks excellent. Now this, you know, there's, there's maybe one or two things. I, I haven't tuned the extruder or anything. It's really just a, the profile itself. And this is set to 250 millimeters per second average speed. So it wasn't going that fast the entire time. So keep that in mind. But this printed out in 16 minutes, which actually beat the fast print time of 18 minutes. Uh, I'm, I'm super happy with how this turned out. I mean, it looks great. I mean, again, you could refine this even better by tuning your filament and flow and all of that. Fantastic job, Sunlu. So what do I think about the Sunlu T3? I, I like it. Um, would I recommend this printer? Sure. Um, I think it's fantastic that I can print a 20 by 20 Voron cube in 15 minutes. You know, if you take out all the minute and a half it does for the auto leveling. Now, as for that, it does a four by four mesh every time you print. I don't like that. And I really don't like the dual knob design of the bed. But other than that, I think it's a great budget printer. I mean, I really don't think you could go wrong here. And even better, I think you could speed it up a lot more. You know, this is using their standard firmware. Put clipper on it. Put input shaping on it. I'm sure you can go even faster, you know, than what we've done here today. So if you like this video and you want to see more content like this, like and subscribe. And as always, happy printing.